What's the first the two main things? Heat stroke and cardiac arrest. Parents, this is an education today that I never got when I was in your position. I didn't start educating until my son passed. However, I ask parents to play your part as well. How many of your parents, how many kids, how many children out here got asthma today? Anybody got a pump with you? All right, cool. Do they got them? Do they know about the pump? Yeah. That's right, because they had you fill out some information. Okay, good. Okay, sickle cell, show of hands. Okay, cool. Sickle cell, you need more water breaks. You need more rest breaks. We got to let coaches know that. Right? We got to let them know that. We got to be worried more about, we got to be worried about more things than can they play and why aren't they playing, everybody. Rest assured, those are easy things. Make sure your student athletes or the organizations they are playing for have the right safety measures in place. And if they don't have the right safety measures in place, maybe you should think about another organization. It's that simple. So this is what a safety tent looks like, everybody. This is all the things, excuse me, y'all. He's young man, get off my, get off my, get off my dub, man. <laughs> everybody, when you have a safety tent, job, this is what it should look like. You should always have first aid kits, right? You should always have perks. I tell everybody, when you go to practices and games, grab a couple things en route. Don't just don't stop at the 7-Eleven and grab Gatorade. Guess what? Make sure you grab Gatorade, water, and a bag of ice. Worst thing that happen to a bag of ice is a melt. Best thing that happen is a save a life. Always bring towels. What do we have in our safety kits today, everybody? We got ice towels. You see how easy it is, kids coming over, student that we come over, throw an ice a pack, a hot cold towel on his head, That's on good. his neck, to start the cool down process. These are all the things that you should be having. Good, also, you should always have a cool, you should always have this cool first transport second tub. This is our tub, so if you need it, go to coolfirsttransportsecond.com. They're inflatable. But guess what? In the event that you don't have a cold water tub, you can go in. And it's called the taco method. We put people in water, we put ice on them, four people. It's easy to cool a student athlete down. And most importantly, everybody, guess what? Pay attention to the signs and symptoms of excessive sweating. The young man came over vomiting. Like I said, when kids do too much too quick, it always happens. When are these deaths or tragedies always happen? On the very first day of practice. See, while everybody was coming in, we had an emergency action plan meeting. What does the emergency action plan meeting look like? Guess what? We need to know who's going to call you for 911. Who's going to call 911? Who's going to call you? Who's going to handle crowd control? Who's going to go over to the gate if we got to call 911 to guide them in to where the student athlete is? These are called emergency action plans. Whether your child plays football, whether they play baseball, whether they're a swimmer, whether they're a track star, whether they're a wrestler, there should always be emergency action plans in place. So, I know I'm giving you a lot of keys, so I don't have to join you in We got all this stuff for But the main thing is, right, if your student athlete is playing a practice, a game, and they don't have one of these set up, and every practice of every game, especially right now, this is peak season for these types of injuries. Peak season. Make sure your student athletes are hydrated. 48 hours, at least 48 hours. Cut down on the sugary drinks, the sodas, and things like that. If you got to take the cell phone in the video game, do that. Because a lot of us sleep trying to get to work.